How's it going, everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. Welcome back to Learning RPG Maker MZ The Basics. In this episode, we're going to learn how to use switches. We're going to do a very basic quest, which will be a simple fetch quest, using a couple of switches or even a single switch. So let's jump into it. This is all going to be handled inside of events. And to create an event, you're going to select on the event mode editing tool up here. And then you're going to double click or right click and select new on top of any tile in the editor. And we're gonna call this one Quest Giver. We'll give the Quest Giver an image. Right now, the contents are blank, so we're gonna have to give something that this character would say. So let's go ahead and insert some new things into the contents. On the event commands, under tab one, you'll see the very first thing, message. We wanna inform the player of what's happening and what they should be doing. You can double click on the face and select a face if you want. You can also insert a name right here. Then we'll put the text we want the player to see. We can select if we want the background to be a window, a dim shadowy box, or completely transparent. It doesn't matter what you pick for questing, it's just up to your stylistic choice. We're gonna leave it on window, and I'm gonna put it on bottom. You can select if you want it on top, middle, or bottom. We'll leave it there. You can click uh, on preview to see how it would look, but keep in mind, based on the resolution of your game, it may show more or less. It also depends on the font that you're using. So just because it cuts off right here doesn't mean it's gonna cut off in-game. We'll have to look at it in-game to really know for sure. So the preview is okay, but it doesn't give you an accurate representation if you've changed your resolution, in which case I have here. You can specify how an event will trigger by clicking on this box and selecting one of the modes from below. We have action button, player touch, event touch, auto run, and parallel for now. We're just gonna use action button, which means if we use the action button while standing next to this NPC, it will play the contents a single time. Right now it'll just say please help me find some power crystals and it'll just repeat that text over and over. So let's insert some choices. We can have the player respond with whatever you want them to respond with. Let's say the first option, I'll find you some or I'm too busy right now. We can decide once again if we want the background to be a window, a dim shadow box or transparent. I'll keep it on window. This is the position for the player's choices. Do you want the box to pop up on the left, in the middle or on the right? Doesn't matter, but um, I'll select the middle. The default choice is going to be where the cursor is by default. So when you talk to them, do you want them to be on, I'm too busy right now. So if they spam enter, that'll happen. Or do you want it to be on, I'll find you some. Uh, I think we'll default to choice one. So if the player is spamming through, they'll just accept the quest very quickly. And then in the option for cancel, you can make it so that the player cannot cancel. They have to select something if you say disallow. That means they can't press escape and get out of the menu. They will have to pick something or you can say choice one is a cancel. For this, when we say I'm too busy right now, that's gonna be our choice two. We're gonna allow the player to press escape inside the text, which would default to this cancel option, saying I'm too busy right now. Now a show choice works kind of similar to a conditional branch. You will have things that will happen based on conditions, and the conditions is what choice the player picked. If we have two choices, then we have two things that we have to design what will happen. For every new option that you add the player to click, you're gonna have to specify what's going to happen when that option is clicked. We made it very simple by saying a simple yes or no. So when you say I'll find you some, we can start the quest, but if you say I'm too busy right now, then she'll say that's too bad, come back when you're ready. And we'll change her face to a sad pouty face because she wanted your help and you didn't give it to her. In the case for I'll find you some, we can change her face to a big smiley smiley or we can change her to her licking her lips. All this is going to do is show text at this point. So in order to make things happen, we're gonna to have to use a switch. So I'm going to right click, insert a new. Under the tab one of the event command, game progression, you have control switches. So we click on control switches, create a new switch. In order to create a new switch, we're gonna select these three dots, select a free space and give it any name. The name doesn't matter, but it'll help you stay organized. You can call it something like power crystals or whatever helps you remember what it is. So we're gonna select this single switch and we're gonna select the operation of on. You can also have a number of switches turn on or a number of switches turn off. This is a great addition 
that will allow you to operate multiple switches at the same time. For this simple fetch quest, we're going to use a single switch and set the operation to on. Now that that has happened, we've flipped a switch, we can do things with that switch. Well, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a new event page by clicking up here, and I'm going to select the same image that we had before, except this time on the second page, I'm going to select the conditions of simple fetch quest one be on. What's going to happen is it's going to try to play page two at the beginning of the game when you first talk to her, but simple fetch quest switch isn't on. So it won't play this page. Instead, it'll try to go to the next page one, and it'll look at the conditions and see if the conditions have been met. In this case, there are no conditions. So it's going to play this one first. We select the first option. It changes the switch. Then this page will be able to be played. Let's put in another show text here. Now, if you talk to her after you've accepted the quest, she's just going to repeat saying thanks please return when you found some in order to complete the quest conditions we'll need to set up a new page let's create another new page this page is going to have another switch condition that has a second switch crystals collected so we've collected these crystals if this switch is on at the beginning of the game when you try to access this event it will look at page three first and it'll say can we play page three but the conditions haven't been met so it will go to page two and then it'll say can we play page two the conditions haven't been met, so it'll play page one. And then if the player says yes, it'll turn on this switch and it'll go to this page. So if you keep talking to her at this point, it's just gonna do this page. Every time you try to talk to her after this point, it's gonna look at page three and see if it can, but it won't be able to. It'll just be able to play this because it only has this switch on. So we need to design another event that will turn on this second switch, the crystals collected. But before we do that, let's design what happens when you return with the crystals. So afterwards, she's gonna be super happy that you return power crystals to her and she can be super strong again but let's give the player a simple reward. In order to do that, we're gonna go into the event commands and we're gonna do a change items. It's under party on page one. Let's give the party an elixir. Here, we're gonna give the party an elixir by increasing its value by one. This will give the party one elixir, but the party won't know that they got an elixir. We have to tell them that they got an elixir. So we're gonna do a simple show text again. I'm just going to simply copy paste with control C and control V and I can press spacebar to go into here and completely backspace that. It'll save me from typing the name again and clicking on the face again. Just a little shortcut. And now the party will get an elixir and they will be told that they got an elixir so they know that they have an elixir. What's going to happen if we leave the event like this is you can get infinite elixirs because we haven't navigated off of this page again. What we can do is turn off the switch or turn on another switch to go to the next page. You can also use a self switch if you don't need another switch for this. Since this is going to be a local page turn and we don't need another global switch for this, we're gonna use a self switch here. Let's go ahead and create a new self switch and it's underneath the control switch control variable area in the same area of event commands page one game progression right here control self switch we're going to turn on self switch a and we're going to once again create a new page if you're making quests you're going to realize that you're going to have lots of pages for your events because you want them to have a dynamic response depending on where they are in the quest line so we're going to once again select the same image have a condition that self switch a be on we should put in some text so if the player accesses this she's just going to say the same thing again that she said when you returned it the first time oh my god thank you so much for finding these uh now i can be super strong woohoo but she's already gave you the reward if we look at this event and from the beginning of the game uh, i've gone over this several times because it's kind of important it will try to play page four first but self switch a isn't on so it'll go to three and try to read it but this switch four isn't on so it'll go to page two then switch three isn't on so it'll go to page one you say yes then it'll turn on this page. So when we turn on switch four, it'll be on this page. And then after it's ran a single time, it will go to this page. How do we turn on switch four? We still have one thing we have to figure out. How do we turn on switch four? So we're going to need to set up another event that's going to turn on the switch four for this quest to be completable. So let's go to another event. I'm gonna to go to the next map and right here on this little crystal thing, I'm gonna make an invisible event. Now, one thing is important to note. If we put an invisible event, it will set the priority to below characters. But if we have that invisible event on something that we can't walk over, the player will never be able to access it. So what we're going to do is change the priority of this invisible event to same as characters. 
That way, the player doesn't have to be standing on this tile to activate it with the trigger of action button. They can be standing next to it and facing it to trigger it to happen. We change the priority to same as character. Then what we're going to do is prompt the player with some text and an option. You see a shiny, dazzling, sparkling pile of power crystals. Do you take one? We've prompt the player with some text so they know what's going on and we've asked them a question. We need to insert a show choice command in the event command. A simple yes or no will work for here. If they say yes, we can play an animation, do whatever we want to make it f you know, nice and flashy and pretty. So let's go ahead and put in a little bit of flair. We're gonna show an animation real quick. This is going to be on tab two under character, show animation. We're gonna select where we want the animation to play. We're gonna say this event and we're gonna select an animation that we want to play. The animation selector in RPG Maker MZ is so, so good. In comparison to the rest of the other engines, this one blows it out of the water big time. You pick your animation that you want for it to play. You can make your own animations, and which we'll do later, but we're gonna go ahead and pick a pre-built one for this. We will wait for completion. If you check wait for completion, it's going to wait for the animation to be completely done playing uh, before the player is able to move again or the event can continue. If you wanted to play an animation without locking the player down, then you would uncheck wait for completion. That's all good and all, and that's going to keep repeating if we keep doing it over, but nothing really is going to happen unless we toggle a switch. So let's go in here, back into the event commands, you can go into game progression and turn on that switch number four that we need to complete our quest. And what we can do is use this same switch that we already have to control the next page. So we don't need a self switch here. We'll do a new page and we'll see if crystals collected has already been turned on, then we'll just show a text saying, you've already collected the crystals. It will just repeat that. Once again, because it doesn't have an image, it's going to set the priority to below characters, but because we're putting this invisible image on top of something that has a collision, you will never be able to access that page so we will have to do one thing change the priority to same as characters now we just have to test it here we are we've uh, interacted with Lule and we can press escape if we're in the menu and she just says that's too bad um, so we have two party members. We have Lulee in the party. I forgot to take her out of the party, but that's fine. Uh, so we can interact with her and she will say, please help me find some power crystals. And you can say, I'm too busy right now. Oh, that's too bad. Come back when you're ready. And if you hit escape, it does the same thing as the cancel option. But if you say yes, I'll find you some. She's going to say something different. She's going to say, thanks, please return to me when you found some. And if we talk to her again, she's going to say, thanks, because you've accepted the quest. Please return because you haven't returned. So we've moved pages right there. So let's go ahead and go down here. Oh, I forgot. I made a battle. And here we are. <laughs> There's Lulays everywhere. Here's the power crystals. If we go to it and press the action button, it's gonna tell us we see a shiny, dazzling, sparkling pile of power crystals. Do you want to take some? If you say no, then nothing happens and you can come back to it and do it again. If you say yes, well then it plays the animation and uh, that's it. You've already collected the crystal, so it doesn't do it again. But the switch has been turned on. So if we go back, gosh, in order to pass, you must prove yourself each time. These animated statues are relentless. And as we return to Lelu, now that we have the power crystals, we can interact with the action button. And she says, oh my God, thank you so much for finding me. Here's an elixir for your troubles. We got an elixir. We could have done a sound effect or some animation there just to be like, Ding -ding, you got an item. Uh, you want to add as much flair and flavor to it as possible. But now if we talk to her again, she says the same thing. Thank you so much. I could, you know, I could be super strong now. And we completed a quest. We used one self switch and two basic switches. And that's basically it for this tutorial. Hopefully you guys found it informative and you enjoyed it. If you did like this tutorial, don't forget to like this video and join our Discord. Links in the description below. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. We'd appreciate that. And that's it for this tutorial. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.